Hello, so this is a basic guide on the arcade uh, in StarCraft 2 called Cobalt Tribes Nature Rising. Here I'm going to be showcasing a build called Stag Stiletto. It's a rogue build for this class. I'm just going to go over how to gear the basics of the game and how you execute this build. So this is actually a pretty advanced build. I'm just showing this um, for those who want to learn this build, basically. So I'm going to play it. Uh, this is a 1v1 against one of my friends. Uh, he's actually a pretty good player. And I'm just focusing on this build, build here. So for here, uh, we're at the first screen. Um, some important ones for this build is this one. So guarantees a rare drop for a stone deposit. Gives you iron or shadow stone guaranteed. So this is important because we really need shadow stone or uh, iron. Um, oh, this this is also very important. This makes you basically um, makes your Melark cheaper. So with this perk, you start with 40 gold. So with 40 gold, you can immediately purchase a Murloc with this one. And Murlocs are very important. Murloc ba basically, uh, it's like another cold bullet for you. So it gathers to be, uh, it gathers stuff for you very fastly. And this also makes a Murloc very, uh, start last longer, I guess. Uh, all these other perks, I guess this one's important. It starts you with one iron. I'll show you why it's important later. Uh, all of the other ones are like, okay, -ish. uh, this one's also important. So, uh, because we're gonna use items that actives a lot. So this one, this 15 gold, um, the excavator, and the negotiator. These four are the most important in my opinion. This one's also good. It gives you like a 100% chance for a wizard. So we're gonna need that too. Oh, and this one. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. But even if you don't have these perks, it's not gonna matter too much. Like perks aren't gonna help that much. Uh, but like they're just good to have basically. I play the game now. So when I start off the game, um, try to mine stone. So to make a murloc, you need a tavern. So I get a stone to make a tower. A tavern basically lets you buy murlocs for 40 gold. So uh, when I start off, uh, I don't think I don't think I can see how many stones there are because I'm in replay mode. But um, here is this stone was four, uh, five nodes. So I just mine all five. So generally. Uh, with the excavator perk, um, the last stone I mine will be guaranteed an iron or shadow stone. So if it's a low number of stone perks on uh, stone nodes on here, I usually mine it out so I have a guaranteed iron or shadow stone. So here I got pretty unlucky, I think. I got four stone and a iron at the end, I'm pretty sure. And you see, mining, ro mining stones is actually not very efficient early because you lose stamina really quickly. So I get one iron and four stone. It's not the worst, but uh, it's not really good. So I get one berry here. Berry is important. So if we're going to uh, stack Stiletto, we're going to need to kill a stag. And stags are hard to kill. So if you chase them, they're going to run away. So you need to trap them. I'll show you later. Um, just going to play it out here. So I get one. Uh, I see a wolf. So I need leather. So I kill these. And uh, I just look for leather around here. So this game... Usually, uh, I try to find a gold in the base there, but sometimes I just base here, near here, and then buy some uh, gems. I'll show later. But uh, this game, I know my opponent likes to rush, so I was scared, so I based all, all the way over here. So, something you really need for this build is you need a bear pelt. So, a bear pelt is important. So, uh, I need to kill a bear. So, I found one, which is pretty good. Um, pick it up. So, at the start of the game, I'm just gathering. Uh, I'm just gathering. Okay, hold on, let me go back a bit. So at the start of the game, I'm just gathering leather, trees, and some stone, basically. So, at the start of the game, what you want to do is get one stone at least, get a berry, get some trees, and get some leather, and try to get a berry. So over here, um, let me see. Yeah, okay, see, so while I'm killing this bear, I see the stag. So this is how we kill stags. Um, this is very important. So, kill a bear. Uh, put down a spike trap. The hotkeys are B, build, and then trap menu. And then click iron trap. So you need one iron. That's why the perk that starts with you with the iron is good. And then put the berry down. So stags are attracted to these berries or a spice, which comes from these herbs. So either these or these. So I put one behind the spikes and it kills the stag for you. The stag thing will go towards it. So I know it's going to go towards it. So I just go do kill this tree while it's walking towards it. Because it takes a little bit. And stags get scared from wolves, bears, or yourself. So you want to stay away from this. Alright, um, what I need for this build is just the stag meat and this leather and this berry. So the antler, it's very useful for some other build, but I'm not using it currently. So yeah, okay. I take it anyways. I don't like if my opponent comes, I'm just afraid they'll take it. So I just take it and then throw it somewhere. Uh, gather wood, gather leather, 
So these wolves drop 100% chance of dropping leather, so I get these. Uh, like 100%. So sometimes, uh, I would not recommend killing this tree at 750 health, even though it gives you a good wood that you can sell for 50 gold. Um, so I would not recommend killing this. It takes way too long. So I go here, get the leather. I, I can ignore the meat if I want, like, hunger is not that big of an issue. I can always just kill more stuff. Um, yeah. And my inventory is full right now, that's why I didn't take it. If my if I had spaced my inventory, I would have taken these and eat, uh, ate them later. But, uh, yeah. See another bear that's actually pretty good. So first night, what I aim to do is, I, I still want to explore, so I want to find a gold. So I just make a fire temporarily, and get a torch. So this torch is, um, so that wolves don't kill me. And also I lose warmth slow, slower. So with the torch, you lose warmth at the 50% rate which uh, you really need. So with the 50% reduction in worms loss, you can basically survive the night with a torch. So kill, the gold, um, kill the bear, get, 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 get the stuff. So I see a gold here, which is pretty good. So I really need a gold. So once I see the gold, um, I make timer and then make a murloc. So murloc's 40 gold. Hold on. Good, never mind. I'm just gonna keep playing. So I make this, um, make the work bench. Uh, hold on, let me see what I'm doing. Okay, so I make the time first. I need to murloc here so that I can get this gold, de gold deposit. Uh, I really need gold for my build. I need gems later on. So that's why I'm getting a murloc. And murlocs don't cost stamina. If I were to mine this alone with my cobalt, it would take way too long and also drain my stamina. That's why I'm getting a, a murloc for this. So here, I make my first item. It's the, uh, this one. Huntsman's jacket. Uh, okay. So Huntsman's jacket. Um, I'll need this item later to craft another gear I need, basically. It's one bear pelt and one lizard. That's why I said I need to kill the bear. And so that I can get this bear pelt. So make a fire. So generally, you want to make a fire near your murloc because wolves at night will attack your murloc. So you need a fire to keep the wolves away. I'll show you later. So plant a tree here to... I, I just need more wood basically so uh let me see my i can't really see my inventory i'm just trying to go around and get wood and uh, more leather so yeah you can't even see a wolf come here you know what? Right, hold on give me one second can i not do this it's for real go whatever I'm just gonna ignore him. Uh, we'll keep getting free here. Uh, okay. 15, 30, 30 minutes. Okay. So I keep mining stone myself because I said I need, so for this build, I need three shadow stone and two iron basically. So I'm trying to get these out of the stone deposits and my Murloc's getting a gem for me. So I need three gems, two shadow stone and one, sorry, two iron basically. So yeah. So when the nights, uh, when the uh, day days coming, I just put out the campfire because, so if the enemy is like nearby near here, they can probably see this fire. So I want to put it out so they don't know where I am because I'm afraid this guy rushes too. So that's why I'm camping in this location. Usually I base here and he just comes like all the way here and kill me. But since I'm basing here, it's safe, but he can still see the fire, so that's why I put it out. And there's no wolves in the morning, so there's no reason for me to keep this fire. Basically. And I just throw the torch away because um, it doesn't do anything. You get a shadow stone here, which is pretty lucky, I guess. So I make this outpost. So here's a here's the thing I'm doing. Let me go back a bit. Okay. So on me currently, I have four. I need, I have four leather and two wool. So I want to use a single wool and a single leather. So I don't want to. I don't want to use like two leather or two wool because I want some of each. Uh, does that make sense? So I put. Three, three leather on the ground and one wool on the ground, and then I make the outpost. So with this, with this outpost, you can basically sell resources, and we need gold, and this is how you make gold. So from the stones I mine here, this, I don't really need the stones anyways. So if I see here, I can sell stone for 10 gold each, I can sell leather, I can sell wood, I can sell wool, and I can sell these resources. I can sell iron, shadow stone, infused lumber, or radiant gem. You can even buy them too, they cost 50% more than... Um, for when you sell them so that's why when i was talking about this tree this tree drops one of these infused lumber which sells for 50 gold and three of these wood which is 12 gold which is uh, 86 gold so this tree is actually very valuable but um 
took takes way too long in the beginning, so I, I do not uh, break it. I get a bird. A uh, bird, you can send them out for your vision. I immediately send, like, over here, I think, so. Just to see what he's doing. Okay, so here, I make this missy. I make this missy, and this is... Uh, now I explain the build. So, on the smithy, I'm for the weapon. I make the stag hunter stiletto. Um, and for the stag hunter stiletto, we need one stag meat, which I killed the stag for. Two shadow stone and a bone sauce blade. Bone sharp bone shard blade is from the workbench. If I click Q here, uh, I can see. Let me see where. Okay, in the offhand actually, in the offhand. Oh, uh, here. So I need one murloc and one of the leather that's why i need the leather and that i can kill the murloc later so the murloc i just need to get three gold gems for me so after that i just kill the murloc and usually like each gold nod's definitely gonna give you three gems unless you're extremely unlucky so i just kill the murloc after that's my weapon my offhand i need the burning savage it's uh throwing it's like javelin so i make i need a javelin for this so i need two radiant gems and a, and a lantern and a basis javelin so for the lantern I need one more gem, so that's three gems, and one iron, and also the vicious javelin, which costs two iron, and a wooden stick, which is two wood. So this is an expensive weapon, it's a 20 art item, 20 artisan, so the higher artisan, the more expensive the weapon, I guess. And so, yeah, so my monarch's gathering the gems, I'm gathering the iron myself, and the wood, it just needs two wood for the uh, stick, basically. Uh, oh, the last weapon. So earlier I made this uh, huntsman's jacket, and from here I'm gonna make the lurker's mantle. So if you see here, I need one shadow stone, three wool, and one huntsman's jacket. So that's why I made the huntsman's jacket. I can make it earlier, doesn't matter. And then I need three wool and one shadow stone. That's also why I saved the wool, because I needed to make this weapon. Oh, uh, this armor was three wool. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep going. Keep getting three basically, and. Uh, let me see. I plant a tree and then yeah. So something you can do is plant a tree. If you're if you're a class except warrior, you can cast spell book, and then cast a spell which grows the tree for you. So it grows forty two percent. So you might have to wait like a few seconds after you do it, and then you can kill the tree. But yeah, I'm just gonna gather wood here so I can make the wooden stick. Make the wooden stick here and then gather. Uh, yep. Make the javelin. Okay, here my murloc already has two gems. So I'm making I'm making a lantern now. The lantern needs one iron and one uh one gem. And suddenly I realize I don't have an iron, so I go here to mine an iron. I mean Murloc's still mining here. I just need one more gem. I get a stone, I get another stone. Get an iron finally. Okay, I I, I think I just mine this one now since I remember a stone too, and I got a cottage stone there, which is good. Uh so well, something you can do. So we are at high artisan, I'm at 20 artisan. Um for each artisan point, making a building or a trap will give you that much stamina so if i go back like a s slight bit okay go back here so making e each mine gives me seven, seven, uh, 17 stamina so I, while i'm mining a stone deposit i'm like losing stamina fast that's why sometimes i use a stone the hotkey is b plus s plus b uh it only costs one stone and it gives me 17 stamina or something else you can do is b and the a it costs half a lumber also for the same amount of stamina, but it's gonna cost you a bit of time. So on mining, I just put down some of these landmines for stamina. So, you know, like mining out basically. Okay, get the third gem here. So I don't need to unlock anymore basically. So when I come back here, I'm just gonna kill it in a second. Yeah, so I drop the tree there. The tree grows faster. So I make the fire and I kill the fire. So now the murk dropped two. I already I already had one picked up earlier. So now I make the burning savage. So first. Oops. I make the lantern, which is W and E. Make the lantern. Then after I make the lantern, I also make the burn shard, bone shard blade, which is used to make a stag stiletto. Okay, so after I make that, I make the burning savage. So which is two gems, a lantern, and a javelin. I have the javelin already, and have all the other resources. Uh, I buy the spells here. So here's the spells you need. So here's why I was selling gold earlier. I was selling all my stones. I was selling my leather, uh, etc. Selling wool. Um, so I need 180 gold in total for spells. So we can ignore these two spells for now. This one, uh, this is Backstab, this is Fiant, this is Wanderlust, and this is Scan. So Scan to see where they are. Uh, this one to, uh, I'll explain the build combo later, but just know you need these four spells. You can try to get this one, but I don't think it's worth the time. Because it's very expensive, so just 
aim to get F, S, A, and C, basically. So now I'm going to Burning Savage. I have it here on the left, you can see. I have it here too. Basic, yeah. That makes a uh, sea light though. So the only thing I need now is um, Lurker's Mantle. And I don't have wool right now, I don't think. So I just bought, okay, so since I have expert, I think I sold something and I, I just buy the resources. I mean, it doesn't really matter. So here, what happens is this is arena mode. And I did not want to go in the arena because I was scared. He was gonna kill me because I wasn't geared yet. I wasn't ready yet for this build. You really need all three, all three gears: the st stags, stiletto, the burning savage, and the lurker's method before you fight, and the four spells. It's very important. So that's what I'm doing. I go here. I go out here to get more trees and the wool. Yeah, I really need wool here, but that sheep didn't didn't drop the wool sadly. So I'm revealed for sixty seconds, I think. So that's that's why I just decided to buy the wool here. I sold like another stone and I bought the wool to make my lurker's mantle. Pop the order, you can see. Uh, wool purchased. And I finished gearing at 820. This is... I'd say if you're like 12 minutes or 10 to 12 minutes for this build, it's good enough, basically. Uh, and I always get the spells too. So if you get the spells and the gear at 10 to 12 minutes, I think you're really good already. Uh, try to get it by at least 15, I think. Yeah. So here... Okay, now I'm already geared. He can still see me for a bit. But now my objective is to get to level 10. So these are skill points. So how I do the skill points for this build is 20 artisan, 10 cooking. So cooking so I can get some food that buffs me, gives me like stats. For example, this one, uh, beer, braised, pheasant, uh, gives me five strengths, which equals five attack. And I only need one pheasant and one beer. And it gives a lot of health too. So I try to get some of these, I get some of these. Uh, this gives two attack, like 4% attack speed, and also uh, 40 health. If I remember correctly so I get these food these need uh, we need I need 12 uh, 10 cooking for these so that's why I get 10 cooking so and also the rest of my skill points so I get 25 skill points uh, left all of these are spent into mining basically okay. so here's how you level to level you need to um, kill killing kill, killing animals and killing stag is very efficient in leveling or killing trees too so killing stuff basically is very efficient in leveling so killing like a stag actually drops much more than killing a sheep or a pheasant and because of my weapon so this weapon makes it so that stags aren't alerted by me so i can just go up to, to a stag and then kill it so what i do when i'm killing stuff is i just throw my javelin i use my ability on my stag hunter i just keep killing all these i pick up the wool so i can sell them later etc all these i'm leveling very fastly so it's 8 840 right now i'm barely level 7 so i i kill trees i kill stags uh, i kill trees i kill trees i kill trees i kill up the stuff okay so here's what you want to do so since you're going around in the wild you see trees and uh, sheep or wolves so here so each these outposts Building these or building a tavern gives a lot of XP actually. So this is how I level. I kill stuff and I make outposts. I don't really need these outposts. I mean, they can, I can send some birds to for vision, but I don't really need them. I just mainly get them so for the XP. Uh, yeah. So keep killing stuff here. So trees, more trees. And, okay, so something with the replay system and it's bugged basically. So what this weapon does is it makes um. So, there's usually blurs when someone's when your enemy's invisible. However, this item re removes all the blurs so that you can't see them at all. So something in the replay system got bugged where you can't even see your thing, even though if, even if you're like on your own camera or if you're on the airplane camera. So when I am when I'm like when my character doesn't show up, it's basically I'm using this weapon or using the active of this. Okay, killing trees, killing more animals, basically. Yeah, so I'm leveling already. Killing, killing wool, killing wool. Uh, also, I'm selling some stuff. So, for the food part. Now I'm talking about some food parts. So, I, these, this thing, makes me regen mana. As a rogue, you're going to use a lot of spells. And these are expensive, 57 mana, 43 mana. So you need these. Uh, these increase improve your mana regen by two which is actually a lot 
uh, I guess not too much, too much, but it's very helpful. The spear and these uh, roasted lamb. These are just cheap things that can give you life. And also here I'm cooking. I'm cooking uh, the the bear cutlet and the spear pheasant. So I got the pheasant meat from like over here. I was killing stuff, and I got the be I just bought the beer. Yeah. So I sold some sold some wool, sold some lumber, and then got the food basically. And now I'm ready to fight him. Like the most important things are the spell, the gear. Sorry, give me one second. So yeah, I just really need the spells, the gear, and some of these cleansing routes basically. Yep. Let's keep going. So this part, the next part, basically applies to all builds I think. So this is how you level in the game fastest basically. Um, so yeah. So I, I keep cooking food, so here you can see I made the roasted pheasant with the berry sauce, or whatever. Uh, these like heal, heal 200 health, so these are really good. So I just fight stuff now, I'm ready to fight him. However, I'm gonna level first, so I'm trying to level here. Uh, just killing everything basically. Where, where am I? Oh, yeah. There is some things that so makes me invisible. So I just kill everything here, I kill, I kill this. I jump around, I kill more trees, I kill the So I'm leveling really quickly. So I'm just killing all the trees. So the burning savage, I can throw down a wolf and it'll die eventually to the burn effect. I go invisible, I go invis all the time, so because uh, this gives me a short distance and also move faster when I'm invis. So here I see auto tree. So earlier, I said to not cut this tree down because it takes way too long. But now that I have the spells, I have this spell, which makes all my damage in the 10 seconds critical hits. And it does not only, it's not only three hits against trees. For trees, it's infinite hits. So I can just chop this tree down very quickly. I'm doing like 100 damage per second. So this is very good. Uh, yeah, I'm just grabbing, I, I'm just grabbing the part of the spare, basically. Okay. And now I got these. Uh, I actually sell, I sell the infused lumber, so I can't really build anything with infused lumber, so I just sell it. And it's 50 gold, which is a lot, so, yeah. Keep killing stuff, kill the wall, kill the berries, kill the tag, kill everything, but it's cool. Okay, so here's the arena timer. I want to get into the arena before time ends. Before the timer ends, basically, I want to get level 10 before the timer ends. So, uh, like leveling this fast is actually pretty hard, so it's not that important. Um, like, level 10 is not required for you to make this work, but it's very helpful. And the leveling is basically very helpful. Like, a level 10 fighting on level 7, you're gonna be in a huge advantage. Well, not huge, but like, you're gonna be in, in a sizable advantage, especially since I'm putting my skill points into mining. So, mining increases my damage. Each mining point increases my damage by like 1% I think. So, yeah. And also, when I get to 25 mining, mining it buffs my critical hits to deal more damage. So, um, I think I get outpost. Each outpost gives me a, a lot of XP. So, yeah. I'm killing more sheep, killing more trees. Uh, okay, so, yeah, that like, that outpost just made my XP jump from like here to here, which is a lot. Keep killing stuff, trees. And I close the tree. Now the apples, now I'm level 10. So I spent all my points into mining and I'm ready to go in this. So if he chooses to fight me here, I think I can definitely beat him. If we look at if we look at what he's doing, Indy. He's uh still level seven. Because my like I was so efficient in getting XP because first I'm fast. Second, uh I, I spent more time leveling basically. Um and this is actually pretty funny. Uh, he is trying to go to a ring to fight me in it. Because generally, it is better for warriors to fight rogues in arena than for me to uh, than for warriors to fight rogues in the open world. Because rogues can just jump around, hit him, and go away, basically. So he just goes in here. Yeah, I guess 30 minute level 10, which is very fast, basically. But my full gear, spells, food, and the level 10 30 minutes. I think that's like really fast in this game. Uh, if you can get level 10 at 20 minutes, I think that's like already very good. So it's <laughs> five seconds left. So if you're gonna go in the arena, you actually have to touch the green thing to register. But he uh he only he thought he could just go here and then register, but it did not work. So there's five seconds left. If he goes directly here, he can just go here, but he chose to minus tree for some reason. Uh, which 
which was, yeah, <laughs> which was bad for him. Okay, I'm just gonna go on every, every one of you here because this part is a fighting part. Okay, so now I'll explain how this build works. This is a very confusing build. Uh, it's, it's strong, but it's very weird. It's very, it's just super weird. So, let me explain the spells first. This is scan. This shows you where they are. You're, you're not really going to use this in fights, and it's very expensive in mana. The slow effect doesn't really matter. It's just showing you where they are. So, these are the three spells we're going to be using. This spell makes your next three attacks, whether they are the Burning Savage, the throw, the throw animation, the throw, the, the javelin throw, a hit, or this spell, the Wanderlust. So this Wanderlust deals damage to him. The same amount as the uh, auto attack damage. Right? It's 62 here. Uh, when I cast it, it's going to do 62. However, if I enhance it with this, it's also going to buff this. So this is actually going to deal 100 damage. And this spell makes my next attack three point uh, critical strike and also push me away. So it's very complicated. So And then this, this active ability moves me towards the target and deals damage. This javelin obviously throws, and this spell and this armor makes me invisible. So, because this armor makes me invisible, I don't actually need the spell that makes me invisible. Uh, plus, this is also very expensive, so I can just use this to initiate my combo. And also, this makes it makes it so that he cannot see me at all, which is very important. So, here's three combos you can do. The first one, I'll show you here. Let me normal. So I go in this. I click X or the hotkey for this. Go in this. I use a fiend. So this this spell uh, this spell makes my next attack critical strike, and also when when I attack him, it moves pushes me away. So here's what I do. So first I use my cloak. Oops, where I where am I? It's not good. Yeah. So I use my cloak. Hold on. Let me go back actually. I'm still looking at myself. So first, um, I use my cloak. So I use my cloak here. Yeah, I, and then I use a fiend spell. And then what I'm going to do here is throw the javelin and then immediately press Q on this guy. So I A move and then use the ability on him. So the javelin throws and the build, my ability just uh, deals damage and pushes me near him. However, when I push, when the, when the, uh, when the, my weapon active pushes me towards him, the Fiend effect, which I mentioned earlier, which pushes you back, is going to knock me back again. And also, the Fiend effect also uh, moves you back into Invis and knocks you back. So it's like an escape tool. And since I have the Lurker's Mantle, it makes him he cannot see my Dwarf Caesar. So I just throw here. So I throw the Javelin, and then immediately I dash towards him, and then it pushes him back again. And then he cannot see me again. This is why it's strong. It dealt like 300 damage to him, because I was 25 mining. <laughs> so if he. Yeah, I dealt like half his health, and that was only one spell for me, which was really good. Yeah. So he heals with his here. It's not a big deal. So I'm back again. Um, usually in my vision, I can obviously see myself, but the replay is bugged. So I only drained this four to three mana, which is good. Also, I I want to mention I have the attack buffs here. So this beer gives me plus two attack, and this beer chicken, which I mentioned earlier, which needs ten cooking, gives me five more attack. So this helps me do more damage. So I'm back here. I use 43 mana, which I regen 10 already. So I have uh, some mana already. I see he's shielding. shielding. So something I notice is I'm low on stamina. I only have 41 stamina. So I'm a bit scared. Although he only has 36 too. And I move faster than him. So so I throw javelin. Um, I'm just poking here. My like my abilities are still on cooldown, I think. So I'm just poking at him. So to, to like do the combos, you really need to use the Lurker's Mantle. So I go D here, and here's what I was talking about earlier. I make these. Uh, this actually takes time, so it's better to put a trap here. So one is mining a stone order, I put down two landmines. But here it's the same thing. Building one of these gives me uh gives me 17 stamina, but it's gonna take like two seconds. So he tries to come kill me here, but now I just uh, use the lurkers again. He cannot see me again. So yeah. So he thinks I'm going this way. Oh yeah, attack him again really quickly. Just doing the combo. And then go back into Invis. He cannot see me again. He, he, he thinks I'm going this way, but I'm actually going here. So that's very honest. He catches a glimpse of me going here, so he turns around again. Yeah. So I make another one for more stamina. So I, uh, stamina is really important, so yeah. Okay. So I go into Invis again. Here I think I do a combo, so let me go back a bit. 
Okay, so let me select myself. The next thing I think I do is the ultimate combo. So I have this ability, this ability, and this ability. So remember I said earlier, this ability makes your next three attacks a critical hits. So what I want to do is I activate this. This is 10 seconds. Activate this. I use my Lurkus Mantle, which makes me invis. So I can sneak up on him. And then I also activate this. Uh, and then, okay, so and then I initiate with this Burning Savage. So I do the Savage, and then I go near him. I attack him with this. And then I use this spell, which also does damage. And it is also buffed by this backstab. And then after, after I do the throw, after I do the spell, after I do the um, chaplain, after and then after I get near him with this and deal damage, I use this spell, which which pushes him away. So I do E plus T, pushes him away, and then I do E plus S, which is a PM spell, which I mentioned earlier, does critical critical strike and also no, and sorry and also pushes you away from him and goes back to invis. So basically, this combo takes two seconds, and he cannot see me after I do it again. I think I just kill him here, maybe. Um, let me see. Okay, so I one more stamina. Uh, let me go. Yeah. So let me go slow it down. For my friend. So I do a javelin. And then I dash towards him. So I activate backstab earlier. I do the javelin. I dash towards him. Uh, deals damage here. And then I do this push, which does which is CNT. It does 139 damage to him. There's a lot of numbers here. You can just see the big ones. And then after, after I do that, I click E plus S. Never mind. That's that's a full combo. I didn't do the I didn't do the fiance spell at the end. You can choose to do this or not. Basically, this gives you more damage, uh, but then it co also costs more mana. So I thought I couldn't kill him here. Maybe I could have, but uh, I just to play safe. I just did not use that. This is also where my um, the cleansing routes come in, which gives you plus two mana regen. Since I'm low on mana, it really helps. Yep. I'm just running away too. He can't really catch me. I mean, what's he gonna do? Like I run faster than him. Uh, the wolves are gonna attack him, but because I have this burning savage, uh, the wolves won't attack me. It's like a torch, basically. And he also put on this armor, so he had the healing armor earlier, but he put this armor, which slows me. So this was actually good play him by him. So he had two pieces of armor. This armor to slow me, yeah, but did not work out. So he's just, just like blocking here, is trying to chase me. I mean, he really can't do anything else. As a warrior, he has to chase chase me here. So once my once my lurker's mantle goes off cooldown again, and also once my mana regens a bit, so, so yeah, I'm just ready for mana to regen. I go in cooldown again. Uh, I activate backstab here. I activate backstab, and then I go on him. I throw the javelin, and then I, since he is low already, and then I use ability, and then I push him away with this. I don't even need the fiend here. The fiend does like. 100 extra damage, but I, I did not even need it here because I had this one. So he's already low, and I finish him off with a attack. Now he's dead. So yeah, that's how the combo works. It's very strong, especially against Warrior. The downside of this build is you have no health. You have 300 health, which is nothing. He had 700 health. That's the downside of this build, but you can just go in busy the entire time, and they can't really see you. This build is actually pretty weak against um, ranged combos. Like, if they have a ranged weapon that can shoot you and they can scan you, uh, they can kill you. Uh, yeah. So, comments here. Um, GG, GG. So, that's the gist of the build to remind, to remind them some stuff. So, what I did, I'll just go through a fat replay quickly again. Uh, let me map my fastest speed. So, mine stone, I need tablet, I need the berry. Beginning. A uh, stone, berry, trees, lizard, and bear, and stag. These five things. Kill the bear. That's very lucky. Use stag. I put the trap. I put the berry. Kill more lizard. When you stag that, I pick up everything. Go find a gold now. Do not kill, do not try to kill these trees. It takes way too long. Find a gold. So at night, I, so first night, I just put down a campfire and then get a torch. And then fine, I don't really need this campfire. Uh, find a gold. I see a gold here. Once I see a gold, make a tavern. Make a murloc, make a fire near the murloc, so wolves can kill the murloc. You can see this wolf is trying to kill the murloc, but because of the fire, he cannot. Uh, yeah. Alright, kill more trees, kill more wool, kill... Uh, limestone. I need four build- I need five buildings. Outpost, uh, outpost, campfire, workbench, smithy, and, uh, tavern, basically. These are the five I need. So, make the- make the outpost. Keep selling stuff. Keep selling my stone. But don't sell too many at a time. So, if I sell, like, one, sells ten, 
next one sells for nine next one sells for eight next one sells for seven so it regens like value eventually so just wait for a bit like sell three and the sell three one minute later so you get more gold so keep selling stuff get more trees uh the, send the boat out sell more trees make it messy make it uh yeah and then i'm still doing work so just gather you need three shadow stones three iron three gems like four leather or something, two wood. Basically, this build is actually very pretty cheap uh, compared to some other builds. And you can do mining, so you're mining, get stamina, and it's all the kill the, mur kill the murlocs. Because I need the shard for the uh, mur murloc skull, so the murloc shard for this uh, bone shard of blade. So that's why I need to kill the murloc. Also, don't let the murloc run out when it, when it like runs out of the time, it just disappears and doesn't drop your shard, so yeah. Keep my gear. Uh, get more wool. So I have two, two, two out of three gear already. Um, I get my gear at 8:30, uh, 8:20. This game usually I can get it by like eight or seven minutes even. Uh, but yeah, so yeah 8:20. This game. After you get this, so you need uh, spells, which I got uh, last night. Spells, armor, spells the gear, and uh, the cleanse drops for mana and some food. So I get this, I go out, I get level, so I kill some, I kill all these for a lot of level, so I'm, I was at like level 6, uh, after I kill all this. Probably to like half through level 7. So, yeah, I kill all these for attacking me, and I can now go back. Sell the wool, sell the wool I killed from the, uh, sell the wool I killed from the sheeps. And sell the, sell some stone, see I'm getting all the gold here. So I buy like five cleansed routes, buy some beer, buy some cooked lamb. Okay, after this, I'm ready to fight him. So I have all the stuff I need. And now it's really just about... Um, now it's just, just really about killing stuff. Alright, uh, I'm just following my camera. Go around and kill stuff. Level one. I'm level eight now. I'm leveling really fast. So, so it's bad you see a lot of these stuff is going on, going to the outpost, but here, once I come to the outpost, and why... Mm, hold on. At 13.20, I am already level 10, so I was at level 7 at 9 minutes, so in 4 minutes and 20 seconds, I actually got, through level, I got from level 7 to level 10, which is really quick. It takes a long time usually, but if you just go around killing stuff and make outposts, it's really fast. So by the time the second arena has spawned, I already have level 10, full gear, food, and spells. So sadly, I did not fight him in the arena, but uh, it's actually better for me if I did not fight him in the arena. The reason I chose to go in is so that he can, if he if he goes in, I don't, I don't go in. He can see that he can see my location for a minute. I do not want that. So I go in anyways, I can probably kill him in the arena too, but it's just better for me in the open world. So, um, yeah. And then here, I can go down a bit, I just keep killing him, these are the combos I was talking about. Uh, and I'll link you guys in the description about more combos that Bell's made. He's a very good player, he's probably the best player in this build. For this build, I'm probably the second best, in my opinion. Uh, for doing this build, basically. I just poke him here, and poke him to the so yeah, that's the gist of the build. Uh, let me actually go out and uh, show show some show some needed stuff for this. So if I go here, just gonna make a solo lobby and where I can test some stuff. Cobra tribes arena. This thing. Okay, we're in here now. These hard perks again. Uh, you can just copy them even. Uh. Also, I forgot to talk about one. This one, I actually really like this. No one picks it, but I think it's really great. It reduces the cost of beer and the rest of the land by two. So it saves you actually a lot of gold since I buy a lot of beer. So I actually really like this perk. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. 
I'll just do some cheeks here. Uh, let me see. Y Q level one ten. Hunters, see at uh, one. Uh, item burning savage one. Item lurkers man level one. Uh, spells. I'm only gonna use these four spells. Uh, item closing crowd. Five. I have to capitalize here. Five. Oop, okay, whatever. I, I don't. I don't even know. Um, I'm gonna summon ninety two testers. So unit fifteen. Greater Niders worm one. Okay, there we go. So I hit it at by accident. So it's at nine sixty health right now. So restore. Let me put my points in. So 20 artisan. And then cooking. And do the rest of the money. Okay. I'm gonna actually give myself two stone. Whatever, it doesn't work. Oh, wait. There we go. Okay, so if I if I have ever long stamina, I'm just running around here, I'm at 96 stamina. If I B, S, B, and the bird down, I regen 70 stamina. So here's how the combo works. Your first combo, only use Fiant. So I cloak myself, Fiant, E plus S, and then I attack and then Q. So it does like 300 damage and then push the game back. You cannot, the enemy cannot actually enter here. You can't run away. And like this makes the blur invisible. So re restore. The second combo is only backstab. So I do not use Fiant. Backstab and just Wanderlust. Wanderlust does not actually cost mana, so it's good. So I go EF, this is for 10 seconds, so I can have plenty of time. Uh, I go uh, cloak, attack, and run away. I can, do, I can do it faster actually. Uh, unit 15 greater. No, I just won. I'm gonna actually copy this one. Good. It's a uh, time health. So the first combo did like 250 damage. This is how much damage the next one does. So EF, backstab, cloak. I do not have to aim it right here. So it just does, uh, this did 450 damage at level 10, basically. And the last combo. So, the last combo, I'm using all three ulcers. So I'm using backstab, fiant, and the wanderlust. So, first backstab, uh, click, attack, shield, yeah. So, here's what I do. I was very fast, I know. Um, first I backstab for more damage. Uh, I burning sap and then I cloak. I burning savage. I Q and then I E plus T. So I'm just pushing him away. And then I click E plus S and then attack him and then push back. So I do it again. Hold on. Restore. E F. Do this. Attack here. E -F. So this can actually even watch out like 500 health. To be nice if you do it right. And then you can like go back. And do it. This can like one shot, five shot, so this is very powerful. So the first example was only the fiance, this is why I use it. So if I know the enemy has a lot of health and I cannot kill them, I just do this. Do this full health, it barely costs me out of hand, so I do not think you have enough, but you get the point. Uh, yeah. Now the second combo is when I want to do damage, but I don't want to waste too much mana. And I know they're gonna not gonna kill me. So if I use fiance, I'm really safe, there's no way they can kill me. So, let me do this. It's here, I do not run away from this, but I know they cannot chase me, so I just do this, save mana, basically. Okay, I the first one again. Yes. I Okay, so the last combo again in a second. Okay. EF. Yes. I accidentally aim move at the end there, but yeah. Basically like this. These are the three combos I'm gonna use. This build is very powerful. It might fall off in the late game. I don't think it really does if you play it right. You move, move, move around really fast and you're safe at night because this kind of damage works as a torch where uh, where wolves cannot attack you. So let me end this off with one more combo and killing this dinosaur. And make a new one. Okay. Yeah, get ready. There we go. That's all.
I hope you liked it. Uh, hope this helped. You can use this combo in your games if you want. But uh, thank you. Goodbye.